In the previous video, we worked on how to create this particular neon effect using texts, but many of you were asking how you could do it to, to use logos as well. You can use your own logo or images as long as they're in the SVG format. So in this video, I thought I'll show you exactly how I go about it. To start it off, we're going to first find out where you can find SVGs from if you don't already have your own logo in the form of an SVG. I use a website called Pixabay, so you can change it to a vector and there you'll find SVG formats. You can just search for rows and you get all of these variations. I already found one that I liked over here. So you can always click the free download and download it as a vector graphic. Once you're done with that, we can hop into Blender, create a new scene, delete the default cube by hitting X and go to file, import SVG, which is a scalable vector graphics. Search for where you saved it and hit import SVG. Once you have it imported, you'll see the SVG down there. So just box select all of them, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and scale it up by maybe five. Once you have that, we can see that each and every single vector is a curve and it's a closed loop. In case you have a vector that isn't using closed loops, in that case, you can always tab into edit mode and just close the loop over here. And in case you have a curve like this, which has two closed loops, but is a single object and you can't select only one at a time, hit tab to go into edit mode and make sure that you select all of them of a single loop. So you can hit that by hitting L and then hit P and separate. So once you have that separated, you'll have two different objects. And then you can go ahead with the following part of the tutorial. So each of these right now is filled in. We don't want it to be filled. So fill mode, we're going to change it to none. And we're going to do this for every single version. Once you've converted every curve into the fill mode of none, we can go ahead and start the rest of the tutorial. So we're going to hit Shift A, Mesh, Q, and then scale it to 0 0.01, and then scale it on the Z axis by something like 200. Then we're going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. And once we're in Edit Mode, hit Control R, put your cursor over one of these edges, and type 1000. Then hit Enter twice. So now you have a subdivided curve cube. Once you're done with that, we can go ahead to the Modifiers properties and add in a curve modifier. And then for the curve object, we'll just select Select our first curve and change the deform axis to Y. Once you have that, you'll notice how it wraps around the object. So now we just have to scale it on the Z axis. So make sure you hit S, Z and just scale it down until the point where the curve just meets. So right there. Once you have that done, hit Shift D, Enter, and then just remove the curve object and select the next curve. And again, just scale it on the Z till it's just about meeting. Again, Shift D to duplicate and then remove this, the next curve, then scale it down on the Z till we just get it meeting. Then do that for all of the curves in the scene. So once you're done scaling them or creating cubes for every single one of the objects, we can go ahead to the actual shading. So we'll start off with the shading of the rows. We're going to go to the materials and add in a new material. But before we start the shading, we're going to just go to our render properties and switch on bloom and screen space reflection. Under bloom, we're going to clamp it down at four and also change the intensity to something like maybe 0.03. Apart from that, we're going to change our viewport shading to rendered and we're going to select our light and delete the light. And finally, we're going to go to our world properties and just reduce the color to almost black if not completely black now let's select our first cube go ahead and add in a new material now we're just gonna click and drag and open a new shader editor window over here and to remove that and then remove the principal BSDF and just search for an emission shader. And now we're going to plug the emission into the surface and change the color to a nice rose color. So let's go with pink like that and just increase the strength to something like 10. And once you switch off overlays, that's how it looks. Maybe a slightly lighter pink. I think that color looks fine. So once you've done that, go ahead and just select every single one of the petals and then select the one that you gave the material at the end. Control L and just hit link material. So now you have your entire rose. After that, let's select our stem. Let's give it a new material or instead of giving it a new material, let's select our stem and then just go down and give it the same material that we just created which is material 001 and then hit the duplicate button so that it becomes its own material and just change the color to something more of a stem like color so let's just go with barely greenish yellow color like that and finally one for the leaf so let's select the leaf and then go down here select the material that we just created copy it to create a new material and change the color to a nice green once you have all of those set up it's time to do the actual animation for the same. So let's assume that this is going to be a seven second animation. So we can do 30 into seven, 210 frames. Then let's go to our output properties and change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. And now let's assume that it's going to remain like this for the last one second. So at 180, let's 
select everything. So we can just hit B to box select and just box select everything and then hit I scale. Then let's go down to maybe frame number 15 and then change the transform pivot point to individual origins. Okay, so now we have to select everything. So we could just shift select everything or we can make sure that we don't select the actual curves. So let's just switch off the SVG curve over here. B for box select and select everything. And then we can always switch the SVG curve back on just by selecting the collection button over here and then just scale it on the Z axis to zero and then hit I scale. So once you have that, you'll actually be able to see the animation of the entire rows form in. To add some more effect to it, just as we did in our previous tutorial, we're going to shift A, add in a plane, rotate it on the x-axis by 90, grab it on the y just so that it moves behind our rows, place it behind the rows, and scale it up. Now to see what our final animation is going to look like, let's take our camera, hit Alt G, Alt R, R X 90, then grab it on the Y axis and then just hit zero and then grab it on the X axis, G, Z, and then G, Y, just to move it back till the entire rows is in frame. Once we're done with that, let's take our plane, just next, let's select our plane, go to the materials, add a new material, and then play around with the reflection. So let's increase the metallic value just a little bit and then search for a Voronoi texture, noise texture, Musgrave texture. It's really up to you based on what you prefer. I prefer the Voronoi texture, so I'm going to use that. Search for a color ramp, place that in, put the color into the factor and this color into the roughness socket of the principal PSDF. Once you're done with that, just increase the scale and make sure that the world background is completely black. So that is how I personally like this particular animation. To render out, just go to the output properties, make sure you select the right output folder, file format FFmpeg video. And in case you want the output to happen in the same file that you've saved your file in, then just hit double forward slash and also encoding, change that to MPEG-4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and render animation. Hopefully this video was useful and you can use various SVGs, your own logos, text, and things like that to create an enormous variety of variations of this particular animation. You can change the backgrounds as well. You can change the randomness to zero to have like a checkered background or pixelated background. It's a lot of um, fun to play with. So I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot more coming up. So stay tuned. And until next time, stay creative.